Welcome back here to Adobe Live on a Tuesday afternoon, live from the UK with my new favorite guest, Raquel <laughs> Costa. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you? Hi, Tim. Uh, I'm a bit nervous, as I've said previously, but um, I'm, I'm really, really happy to be here. So thank you for having me. And thank you to everyone who's coming to join us during this uh, yes. live session. <laughs> I hope you'll enjoy it. And <laughs> I'm sure they will. And no need to be nervous. We are all yeah. friends here. Um, and speaking <laughs> of friends, I have a couple of friends joining me in the chat today, which is, as always, on Behance. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you're watching this in the wrong place. I mean, you can feel free to stay there. But if you want to participate mm -hmm. in the chat and say hi to everyone, then make sure to come on over to behance.net slash adobe live. Once again, that's behance.net slash adobe live. That's where you can find the chat and our friends, including, let me just have a look at the chat. <laughs> there we are. We have, oh, Stuart says hi, and Andreas, and Andre, and Katya, and Gareth, and <laughs> General Kenobi, hello there, and Gisela, <laughs> and hello. Jackie, who's joining us, but Gisela is joining us for the first time, by the way, and Jackie, and Linda, and Norman, and Nuno, and Oliver, and Renata, and Sandrine, and Sean, and Stuart, and Vanessa, and so oh many God. others who haven't, haven't even said hi <laughs> in the chat. So if this is your first time as well, and you have never said anything in the chat. Well, this is your chance. Let us know where are you joining us from. Do say hi on Behance. And I'd love to read um, your messages to uh, my favorite guest, Raquel. <laughs> so without further ado, now they're all saying hi. <laughs> Lovely. That's great. Hi, um, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for sending your messages. <laughs> and joining us from Lisbon. Oh, how interesting. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I, I I hope that my friends are are, are joining soon and watching because I invited them. <laughs> oh, there and we I, go. Maybe yeah. some of the new faces are some of them. Who knows? Maybe, anyway, maybe. <laughs> and that's enough from me. Um, why don't you just uh, for a quick uh, mm -hmm. moment let us know who are okay. you, what are you doing today, and like what can we expect from uh, that's a big word <laughs> what can we <laughs> expect from you now what do you have for us today yeah well um as you as you've mentioned i'm an artist and illustrator from portugal um in i've been working mostly in children's books and editorial illustration i've also been doing some concept art and visual development for animation uh, i'm also a teacher in the individual arts uh, field so uh, well, today I'm, I'm, I'm bringing my, my focus here in the session to my practice as an illustrator and the theme that I've chosen for this first uh, live demo here on Adobe Live is the illustrating stylized characters. And um, uh, maybe I, I thought I should start by, by just explaining a little bit of what I mean about mm -hmm. uh, the, the stylization of characters because um, when I talk about stylization, I'm referring to um, a practice in which you are trying to depict figures, objects, spaces, landscapes, whatever, in a sort of non-naturalistic, non-hyper-realistic way. So there's a kind of style, uh, a set of rules, a sort of graphic rules that you apply so that everything just um, adds together in a nicely composed image. And um, since in my practice as an illustrator, I don't really um, tend to do much hyper-realistic work, um, I try to explore a stylization as, as a way to uh, bring and convey emotion and expressiveness and even personality to, to, to my characters. So the, the, the goal here is always to, to 
enhance the the storytelling part of uh, of, the, of the image because um, every bit every bit of your illustration will communicate something and so the way that you stylize your characters will also help uh, reinforce or underline their attitude or their just a gesture or a pose and um, if any of you just uh, go through my social media platforms or my Behance profile uh, and for those of you who might know my work from, from before, uh, you might know that um, I, I have explored uh, quite a, a broad range of approaches to, to stylization. Um, and I thought it would be interesting to start by, by showing you that a little bit. Yes. So, very quickly, um, if you haven't followed um, Raquel on Behance yet, <laughs> and if you are on Behance, you can click on the info tab above the chat and there will be, will be a link to the profile and you're free to, uh, free to check out all the work um, that she's posted in there. So, um, and Stuart already says, oh, this is going to be good. Her work is amazing. Well, oh my god thank you thank yeah. you for, Ooh, for saying that <laughs> if you have any questions along the way if this is your first time we will mm -hmm. answer live uh, your questions live so do post them in the chat on behance and i will do my very best to interrupt uh Raquel in the rudest way possible and ask all it's... your questions <laughs> um... no problem i'm <laughs> i'm i'm fine with it tim you can interrupt you interrupt me as much as you need to uh i'd love to hear the the messages and the questions that our uh, our guests are are sharing with you so that's okay. um let's let's over to your ipad i suppose yeah 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 of course uh I, I i don't want to bore you and i don't want to take too much time of this of this session with it with this part but i have here a selection of a few just a few images where the main focus of my work was to stylize characters in a certain way and what I think I, I should underline here is that the, the my approach to stylization, since I have this uh, versatility in, 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 in what I do, is that the, the, the style, the visual language of the work, it's, it's aimed at a certain audience. And so it's, uh, it, it tends to, to be uh, determined by the specific needs of, of a project. So for example, I have a, an older project here. Uh, this was done for Vodafone, the, the communications um, company. Uh, they have this online uh, brand activation game uh, where you have uh, the ability to collect cards um, uh, uh, special in, in it, kind of like a collection of of um, of, of character cards mm -hmm. and I designed for them a few years ago a collection of like 60 characters inspired by uh, liter literary classics and children's uh, uh, fairy tales so my my brief was to stylize those characters in a way that they would not resemble children's traditional illustration or not the the way that Disney uh, um, reinvented those characters. So this is an example of um, uh, a kind of hybrid work where I, I did all the line work traditionally on paper and then all the color was done digitally on Photoshop. And this is um, a few examples of just a, a select, short selection of characters like the Queen of Hearts. And here you see um, Captain Hook from, from <laughs> Peter Pan. And you, you might notice that they, they have this kind of modern yeah. urban look with the um, technology gadgets because that was part of the, the, the brief. Okay, so Vodafone is, they have this um, youth segment in their brand that, mm -hmm. uh, that's called Yorn. So uh, since I was working for that youth segment, they wanted the characters to be really appealing to the modern young people and so this is how i designed them and here we have monster uh, uh a, a monster that's the beast from beauty and the beast, <laughs> the <Mo> beast. <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and well the, the you can go and have fairy tale ca characters without uh having uh the little red riding hood and so in here um that was probably when my work uh, approached a more sort of realistic um approach to 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 stylization where i had uh i tried to have neat proportions and i tried to have uh, recognizable uh, face features and all all the 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 emotion and the personality was based on the way that I designed the well the char the characters' clothes and the hair and everything and the and the gadgets that they had with them, um, and 
more recently, I've been moving a, a bit further away from, from this kind of um, approach. And I've been exploring uh, more, uh, I, I, I don't want to say extreme solutions because nothing here is too extreme, <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to say that I've been moving uh, a bit further from this more realistic approach. Mm. And since I mentioned that um, stylization, that the type of visual language that I, ch I choose um, depends is or is determined by the specific nature of the project, I thought it'd be interesting to show you something that I did last year for a children's book, uh, which is which was the um, in Portuguese the first um, edition of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, um, which is a friendly and inclusive edition. Uh, that it's it's friendly because it's specially designed mostly for children, and it's inclusive because it was prepared to be accessible for as many readers as possible. So this includes blind children, and mm -hmm. although they don't see the illustrations, the book has the text printed in Braille, oh. so they can at least read the text. Um, and if the blind children have their parents reading the book with them, they can always explain the illustrations to them, which is something really, really cool. And there was the, a specific aspect of that book, which was that um, in between children with normal vision and children that don't have, uh, unfortunately, no vision at all, you have children with very low vision. And that mm. determined the specifics of my stylization, because I had to create a visual language that was based on really simple shapes and really bold colors so that children who don't see much fine detail could read and interpret the images easily. And then this, this was the first uh, illustration that I created to, um, to, be, to, be, to be featured on that book. This was to be approved by, by the, the editor of the project. And in terms of the visual language, it worked out fine. Uh, simple shapes, bold yeah. colors, really simple backgrounds. But then another layer of, of specifics in the brief uh, came up, which was, OK, so this is really, really, really uh, kitty illustration for really young readers. Mm. But we want this to be broader in range. We want our audience to be not just first readers, but also teenagers. And so teenagers will just run away from this yeah. this type of illustration because it's oh that's for kids and i yeah, i'm not yeah, a kid yeah. anymore so then i had to reinvent my approach to to be based on the same rules uh but to to be more appropriate for my target audience so i ended up coming up with this mm. which was eventually the, the 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 visual language that that was uh utilized in the rest of the book and all the illustrations so it's kind of the same composition the characters have the same attitudes and are, are interacting in the same way their 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 characterization is done in the same way because it's like a a, a multi-gender multi-racial group of friends mm. and um but I depicted them uh, in, in in a way that would make them seem more adolescent-like and more appealing to 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 um, an older an older audience. So yeah. this and is you're getting mm -hmm. you're getting compliments all around. Uh, Sandrine says, "I love the texture; it's quite subtle." And also, oh, um, thank you for the other illustrations. I like how the map shows a warning of the wolf. Uh, Oliver says it. Um, we have Jackie again with the details, Crocs <laughs> on the shirt. So um, love all uh, around for your work. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys, for all your support. It does it does mean a lot to me. And and, and I do hope you enjoy because I'm, I'm just showing you a bit of my process yes. and how it has evolved. And uh, I, I do learn a lot from, from hearing other professionals and other creatives uh, talk about their process. So I hope it does the same for you. And um, well, without further ado, the kind of uh, stylization that I'm bringing you here today to do a little short demo on is something more on the lines of where I go more extreme and not so close to to um, a realistic approach. In, in these kinds of drawings and illustrations that I've done uh, throughout mostly last year, what I was trying to do was is um, create a composition based on a character where I'm focusing on notions like balance and contrast and rhythm. When and, and when I talk about these things, balance is when you, you know that every part of your composition is 
in a dialogue with with the other so you have a, a good balance with for example just plain line work and uh shading or, or bold um mm. uh, filled shapes for example uh, uh the balance between negative space and 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 uh, filled space so some, something yeah. like that and uh in terms of contrast of course it, it it's contrast in values in in dark and and light aspects of the of the image it's also contrast for example between hard straight lines uh kind of geometric uh, approach to, to line work and then being contrasted with flowy organic uh, curved lines um and also one of the things that I wanted to, to play around was with this dialogue that's also kind of contrast between a certain flatness uh, and volume. Okay, so you, you'll you'll notice that in, in images like like these, the ones that I'm showing you, uh, there are aspects of the of the image that I I like to leave plain flat, mm -hmm. more graphic, more minimalistic in, in their in their depiction, and then make a, a really bold contrast with the more detailed and and um, shapes with added volume, th mostly through shading and, and the texturization. Yes, so especially around the hair, is... I noticed some uh, really great uh, volume in the chat also noticed they're saying the way you did the yeah. hair is so creative. This is a great work. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much for the support, guys. And uh, yeah, I, I do try to use the hair as a main focus of contrast because, if, for example, I think this is a good example because mm -hmm. I, I I focused most of the flatness in, in the character's body and clothes. And then I thought that the hair by nature is such a, an organic shape because it, it, it doesn't have hard edges that you can recognize. So even if I design it as a as a really defined shape, I can still play around with this flowy notion of of it being um, having movement. I, I think that's one of the things that I, that I that I like to to play around with is um, create the subtle notion that there's movement in the image, even though we know it doesn't. So um, we're going to do something in the lines of this, but of course I, I also have um, a few other options where instead of playing around just with the texture and and, and patterns, uh, I also play around with color, always with a sort of limited palette. Um, so I can really um, create a certain type of, of mood or, or, or an attitude to, 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 to my characters. So, these are a few illustrations that I haven't uh, really shared publicly uh, yet in my portfolio, but they're done for, for a music festival that's been going on, and I'll share more about it uh, soon, later this year. Uh, but so it's all about uh, trying to think of basic shapes when I'm when I'm uh, thinking of, of doing this this these characters. So simplified shapes, uh, strong outlines so the the pose or the gesture is clearly defined and then uh, having all these things balanced together in a way that when 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 you look at the character, their pose or their gesture communicates something to you about that mood or about that that personality. So, um, just uh, one more example um, about a different approach. This time, also a limited palette, but but a, a more demure one. Not so bold colors because I wanted this mood to be softer and lo-fi. So mm -hmm. you can see that the approaches vary, but you you have always this this these key points in common. Uh, the notion that. Um, there are a few rules that uh, that I tend to apply. I like to play around with exaggeration and, and proportions, and I like to focus on pose and gesture to convey personality and and a mood, and the fact that it's good to have contrasts, be it either with flat and volume, uh, other line and texture, or uh, color and light and shade so um i think it's it's um it's what i've got for my intro and i think i should get started on on my demo otherwise i won't have any time to show you <laughs> how i'll go about it <laughs> yeah whenever you so. want we can uh jump over to the uh, okay to the perfect line. so let's 
jump to Photoshop and well, if feel could, free to interrupt if, if you have any questions. If you could just move your mouse uh, a bit uh, off the screen. There we are. That's perfect. Thank you. Mm, sorry. No, no, it's all right. It's all right. It's okay. Uh, so I hadn't noticed it. One weird thing before we st get started, you are working mm -hmm. in Photoshop on the iPad and not Fresco. Any, any yes. reason for that? Oh, uh, I have a reason for that, but it's not a really cool one. It's not a good reason because oh, um, I'll be honest, I, I'm one of those people that has a bit of trouble um, trying new things once they're really, really used to, to, to a certain tool or a certain way of working. And well, I've worked in Photoshop for so many years now. Uh, I worked on Photoshop before there was Photoshop for the iPad and um, uh, since I've had my iPad, I've had it before there was Photoshop available for the iPad. So I, I tried a few other drawing apps on, on the iPad. And as soon as Photoshop came out, I started using it. And for me, it's it's about that, the, the tool that I used to know better and I was more comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was, it was, it was just, it's, there's no good reason for it because I've recently started playing around with Fresco yes. and I found it so much fun. It has so much potential and, um, yeah, well, I had committed to doing this, this session using Photoshop when we first <laughs> talked. So, so I, I didn't, oh. I didn't want to roll that back, but, uh, uh, yeah, I, I will definitely be using a lot more of Fresco from perhaps, from now on because I'm yeah I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> perhaps in a in another in another session because I mean feel free yeah. by the way to start um, drawing. You don't need to wait for okay. me. Okay. But um, okay, perfect. So I'll just show you something. I I have kind of a rough sketch, just a really rough sketch of what I intended to do today. So I wouldn't necessarily um, be looking for for an idea here, um, and. This is just how I usually get started. I, I try to think of a, a basic shape that I can work with and that I can try to replicate uh, in, in, in my character. And so for this, I, I, I came up with this kind of, um, let's see, why am I not? Okay, what's happening? Yeah, no. No. So yeah, this. This kind of S, um, it's kind of a line of action also because it's that line that you can use to really, in a simplified way, uh, describe your your character's motion and, and the attitude. And so I brought this um, this rough sketch. So I, I will show you how I would just do a little bit of uh, cleaning in my in my sketch. I'll clean up a little a little bit just so when I'm working with my uh, final lines, I'm not looking for details. So uh, the only thing that I might just uh, try and fine tune is the details that I I want to be want I want them to be more like more delicate, and so. I would try and clean that up a little bit, but you might notice that for this kind of um, of approach to stylization, since uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to to that spontaneity of of lines, um, I don't like to clean up too much. So okay. For most of my rough sketch, I think it's nearly good enough to go. So I'm just tightening up a little bit and um, seeing mm. what 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 I should keep and what I should lose. I like the way that uh, I don't have to define everything neatly. And I, mm. I think in, in my rough sketch, most of these lines work <laughs> well enough. So. I might just take take the chance to, yeah, do a little bit of cleaning up. So when I'm working on the hands, for example, I have kind of a better. I mean, you're working at quite the speed. That's uh, that's very impressive. Well, thank you, Tim. Uh, but this is uh, this is part of of the process because. Mm. Um, 
it it does the, get improve with practice the working with with speed part uh, of course and if i don't practice <laughs> i lose the speed yeah. um but it's also uh, an exercise in itself where i try not to um really uh go slowly and second guessing the lines and going like this within tiny little bits because what i think works for something like this like this pose it's the feeling that the character is in motion and if the character is in motion the lines uh have to be really flowy and and really um I will, I will say expressive, all lines are expressive in their own way, but I, I want my lines to be done uh, in kind of like one or two strokes. I don't want them to to feel like they've been mushed. I'm not, not sure if, yeah. you, yeah. if you understand what I mean. So it's it's different uh, for 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 different projects because if, if I'm of working course. on yeah an illustration that's a full illustration with characters and background and and um, different elements and, and I have to consider perspective and everything, then yeah, I do have to, oh, what happened there sometimes? What's happening here? I created this. Oh dear, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps Not it drew sure. with your finger for a moment. Oh, you know, yeah, it's it was probably it because it happens quite a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty <laughs> sure there's a setting in there which allows only yeah. a pen to draw, but maybe, yeah. Anyway, no, um, no, I'm I'm sure there is, and and uh, I know I've seen it, but I'd, I'm not sure if I if I have enabled it in that way. So sometimes when I'm zooming in or out, I'm I'm drawing with my finger. So apologies can, for that. <laughs> perhaps we can check that after the stream when we're done. Yeah, of course. Of we don't course. want to interrupt anything. And by the wh while you are drawing, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. they are all again complimenting. They're saying you had no shaky hands there. <laughs> oh, I do have shaky hands. You're just not. The telling, <laughs> but just my, way I too do quick have to see that. Uh, yeah, and, um, Andre <laughs> yeah is it's saying, all um, such confident, uh, much skills, <laughs> such confident, much skills. <laughs> Very nice. Um, and Sandrine Thank says, you. utter jealousy here. And Dara says, such confident oh. line work. And we have a question <laughs> from Stuart, okay, perfect, who's asking, What is mm -hmm. your favorite go to brush? Well, I do love. The one that I'm using for for sketching the the animator pencil, mm -hmm. and well the the, the go-to brush, it depends on what I'm working on because for example in a in a in a project such as this where where I'm um, I'm trying to work with with fine lines I will look for a, a fine line brush and if I'm just using a more uh, crayon like uh, style I will I will try and find that but. Um, you know, for I've I've been using a few of uh, Kyle Webster's brushes. I, I admit I'm I'm a fan of Kyle. I've mentioned it before to to Tim, and I I, mm -hmm. I use his brushes a lot. <laughs> and uh, for example, I do like this one um, that I'm using now for for the 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 inking, which is kind of it works. It, let me know that oh, it's it's this one Guelf Pro. Um, it's I, I I find it it has um, kind of like a nice flowy like not brush pen or something or marker. Uh, I love the fact that I can, as you see, uh, create really fine or really hard lines, um, taking advantage of the the pressure. And so and yeah, one? it. it which one was it again? This, can, can you show the? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll show. I'll show. It's this ah, Kyle okay. from Kyle Zinbox, yes. the Guelph Pro. Uh, I'm using a uh, Guelph Pro too because then it, the the differences between them is like, for example, if I use the, I'm not sure if you can tell the difference, but the Guelph Pro, uh, the first one is more like a a used brush pen. So yes. the the ink, the ink, it's it's not running. It's so, not perfect, so, right? It's a bit dried up. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a bit like a bit dried up. So for for this, since I, I want a, a bit more um, um, hardness to the yeah. to the to the color of the lines, so I'm using. I wonder if this. it could almost be done with like the fresco vector brushes. 
It could. It mm. could. <laughs> and we have just a very mm -hmm. quick Owen Sandrine is waving. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Great, apparently Automat is sleeping today. Um, we have also a comment from Paul. Uh, really great work. I looked at Instagram beforehand, so if you don't know the woman, you, you've you overslept the world. So, uh, yeah. But Paul, Paul, thank you very much for the message, but no need to post that five times in the chat. But thank you very much. It's a nice compliment. But I, I've, we've thank seen you. It now. We've seen it now. <laughs> or maybe I've just thank you. Thank with, you for the this. support. <laughs> anyway. Right. Um, and Oliver says, iPad Photoshop does have an option to disable fingers. It's called stylus only painting. But you have oh, to thank go back you. to the home and tap on your face. <laughs> you have to tap on your face. Yeah, that's what I do every day. Just tap on my face. <laughs> so, yeah. So because I haven't <laughs> done that uh, beforehand, so uh, you, you'll keep seeing that uh, my finger on, trying to we, we join the painting. We, we spent some time in that exact menu just before the stream because um, we had like the presentation mode enabled where you could only see the canvas and not the interface. So it's uh, it's fun. It's fun. All right. Yeah. And Vanessa also says, I've gone back to the basic round brush nowadays. And surprisingly, just the basic round mm -hmm. brush can be a great tool to work. And yeah, I agree because as you will see in just a little bit, I'm going to use it uh, as well because... I found that it works really, really well uh, for that effect that I that I'm going for. Uh, you'll see in a minute mm -hmm. you, if you if you remember the kind of same style uh, characters that I've showed before. There was this uh, shady shading with done with kind of like a grainy texture, and it's done with a with a soft round brush just in in dissolve mode. So I will show you in just a little bit. So. And Sandrine says, clean as a whistle and brush queen plus noise control are my favorite fresco, uh, my fresco favorites. Um, yes, I no, I, I, I've tried noise control and it's, yeah, it's a favorite of mine as well. Um, I, here on Photoshop, I like also for, for line work, uh, Belgian comics and um, the comics letter for some uh, a bit of more um, stable line. Oh, so there you go, drawing with my finger. <laughs> uh, thank it's, God for the uh, undo button. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. And for example, for this uh, longer lines, I'm going to probably have a little bit more of smoothing so I can have Photoshop work with me. <laughs> so and stabilize. The, the best part is yeah. after you're done, when you're finished with the illustration, you can always export it um, in the desktop version, to the desktop version of Photoshop and continue yeah. or refine it or share it or do whatever you want. <laughs> and Sean exactly. Says, Finger painting on Adobe Live. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's, uh, it's really, really cool. So I'm almost done with um, the line work yes. and moving on to textures and such really soon. And so I'm just going to fill this up. Let's see if the, yeah, the, there we are. the paint bucket, real life saver. <laughs> By the way, the paint bucket uh, got an upgrade in the, I think the fresco version where, um, oh. remember the, do you know the times when you fill in a shape and you got this wide pixel edge y around yeah, yeah, yeah. the contour? Yeah. That can be fixed now. Oh, that's perfect. It's, like because th that's, yeah, it's it's usually the biggest turn off for using the, the, the paint bucket. Yeah. There's um, like a slider and now, by the way, you paint it with the finger again. <laughs> There's like a, <laughs> a slider now where you can then increase or decrease the contour and you can fill in that um, mm. wide pixel edge. I'm not sure if it is part of Photoshop. I would check right now. Okay, I I, I haven't checked uh, yet, so I'm not sure. Well, I will, you could just continue drawing. I will let you know in a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. So done with the, with the line work for now. And um, I, I'm going to move to, to filling this with... Um, with some some textures okay just maybe something here <laughs> um, okay i don't think it is part of the photoshop on the ipad version yet but it should be part in fresco 
Okay, perfect. Just so doing perhaps a little for bit. the next when when you're joining us again, hopefully, fingers crossed. Oh yeah, if, uh, if you'll have if you'll have me, <laughs> if you'll have me, sure. I chat. Perhaps perhaps yeah. we can ask the chat. I mean, I'm, we have we don't we aren't even <laughs> done with the stream today. But who would like to have her come back? Oh. Let us know in the chat. Um, anyway, thank you right. for the support. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, no light bulbs. Yeah, no, Sean. I know. Don't remind me of that stream. Um, cool. Now we have. Oh, I guess you have done line work. I haven't done anything. <laughs> I'm just sitting here. <laughs> yeah, I've but you, you, you've shown you have shown your support, <laughs> exactly. Uh, which is which is is important. And <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. for for since I'm I, I I'm working with the with this all these basic shapes, what I what I like to do uh, that helps me speed up the process is I create. Um, like with a lasso tool, I create selections of the shapes that I want to have. Okay, so this didn't work uh, because I let it go. I am going to create selections of the areas that I want to fill, and I'm going to first fill them with a flat color mm -hmm. so that I can later keep uh, loading them as a, a selection. And uh, I have the add to mask mode on so I can come and do just a little bit of fine tuning to the mm -hmm. selection. So you can see, I hope, the the, the, the marching ends. Yes. Yeah. And uh, what I would do is I would fill this with plain black uh, with a like the hair and then another layer for for example the pants that i'm also going to fill and later i'll be turning this flat color off and replacing them with the textures and you're doing that on a new layer of course so you can yeah have individual yeah. access there we are okay very important sometimes you tend to forget to put on the new layer and then you just notice at the end like oh no I've painted yeah. everything on the wrong layer for the entire time. Oh. Yeah, so it happens. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't, I lost my selection. Uh, it happens no. more often than than I'd like to. Uh, yeah. the, realizing that I'm painting on uh, the wrong layer, and so it, it as with everything, it comes to a question of uh, of habit when. Yeah. When I'm when I practice enough, I know that I have kind of like this protocol well established in, in my head that new shape, new layer. So each shape has its own independent layer. And if I do need to edit or change it, uh, I can always do that. And, um, and Fresco is actually <laughs> helpful in that. Um that way because if you switch between pixel and vector it will automatically create a new layer for you so you don't have to do anything exactly That's quite useful um yeah and by the way we have the results from our very informal poll uh, about asking you if you want to come back and the results are in they say um oh. sandrine says yes oliver says yes Stuart says yes andrew says yes linda she said uh, clever oh. Dara, uh, ilia that's a cool ilia cool name, cool name. Um, they are all saying yes, mm -hmm. so I guess um, mm. I guess you have to come back. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no I problem. Know. Yeah, yeah. I don't. So you're stuck with me. <laughs> yeah, pff, nothing we can do about that. I think oh. some of those some of those uh, weirder to pronounce names for you might be some of my students. Uh, they usually listen to me talk in Portuguese, but if I hope ah. they understand <laughs> in English, I'm happy to have them here. So, okay, let's let's see. Um, I have the the pants and the hair. I'll start working with the the pants new layer again. So this, the, I'm, I'm, I'm using this just to, to load as a selection. Mm -hmm. Okay, so loading the content of the layer. So this is just, I'm sure there are many ways to do it. This is kind of the way I do it. Um, so that I can start by choosing kind of like, let me see, kind of first maybe with the, um, like a softer grainy brush not too small 
try and add a little bit of extra here. Maybe not so big and maybe not so much flow. Okay, and um, then this is the part where I go back to using the soft round brush. I like the the, the version with the pressure opacity um, control and flow control. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I just go right to the dissolve blend mode because it it's what helps you create this grainy noise texture that I love. And um, okay, so this is for the kind of like the base of my of my shape. It's cool. Then I'm going to move to a new layer. And I'm going to modify the selection so I can edit each leg separately. And now I can focus on creating this more volumetric shape. And Stuart is asking, mm -hmm. have you always been an illustrator or have you studied other areas too? <laughs> I have. Uh, uh, I, 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 I haven't been always an illustrator. I'm, so, I'm sorry that I babbled answering the question because <laughs> the cool. answer is no, no. I okay. should have said that. <laughs> um, my, my background in art school is it's actually nothing to do with, uh, with illustration. My, my background is in fine arts, in sculpture. And only more recently, um, like in the last 10, 12 years, maybe, did I uh, move on to, to my career as a designer and illustrator. Uh, so, yes, uh, this was not my, my starting point. It, it was not even my, my academic uh, chosen path. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know I... At the time, I admit, I didn't know uh, it could be uh, a choice of career path. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, just finding my passion along the way and doing my best to, to learn how to, how to get there and how to be best at what I do. So since I didn't get that starting point in art school learning mm -hmm. The basics of being an illustrator i have to do it all the time um yeah just just yeah. by myself and uh, i think it's it's cool to never never forget that that um i'm always learning so i'm looking here and, for something i mean mm -hmm. that's why we're also here today so we can learn um these fantastic skills and i'm pretty sure at least i can speak for me when I, and i can say i always mm -hmm. uh have been self-taught in regards of adobe and of course in art um and i'm mm -hmm. pretty sure lots of you in the chat also have um to spend uh, the, the, your entire life just learning things on your own not necessarily going to school or it's like the, <laughs> i like to call it the university of youtube <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um and yeah as we can see, doesn't matter if you um, which which kind of training you have, as long as you are interested and as long as you're willing to learn and improve and take and, in, and invest time to practice. Yeah, uh, exactly. You become you can become anything you want. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not always. Not everything you want, but uh, at well, least uh, you don't have to <laughs> limit. You don't have to limit your your expectations and your dreams because you can always try uh, and aim for 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 being something that even if enough other people said it's not uh, a right path I mean, for you. you you can uh, always try and there are certain uh, there are certain job descriptions where I would like to have a trained professional <laughs> like if I'm going into going to the doctor and he says like okay I'm, I think I've seen this before hang on let me just look up on YouTube I'm like oh <laughs> mm. exactly that looks different that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, well uh, that's I mean. what I, what I was sort of thinking about when uh, when 
mentioning that uh, well it's it's you, you you there's not always the chance available to be anything you want at any given yeah, time but course. this might be sound a bit strange but i've been i've been um watching a, a music theme documentary on on hbo which is called the music box and yesterday i was i was uh watching one of the episodes that's um about Kenny G and please no judgment I'm not saying no. that uh, no. uh, it, it doesn't matter if you, you like his music or not but he said something really intelligent because he said everything that I've tried to be good at I have become good at and then he explains it because it's through hard work and practice and yeah. I thought it was so cool because he's a really talented mu musician even though you might not like what he does and oh. he has I he has like other aspects. Yeah. I do like a glass of Kenny G in the evening with a glass. Yeah, of, why not? Uh, why not? Nice so, um, and by the way, speaking of um, practice and, and talent, also because mm -hmm. people always say, "Wow, you are so talented!" And like, no, I put in the work. Yeah. I wasn't born with an Apple pencil in my hand. Yeah, it exactly. Took a lot of work, so no, I'm not talented. But thank you for the compliment, anyway. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work for everyone. Nobody. Exactly. Really exactly. And is good at something naturally. Unless your name, of course, is Sean Coase. In that case, you're just <laughs> good at everything. Mostly also <laughs> filters and fingers. So, yeah. Anyway, right. So, we are now, just for everyone who is joining us, um, who has joined us late, because I've saw, I've saw, I can't talk now. I have <laughs> seen some new faces in the chat. Uh, Yumacorn is just joining us, saying she's very late. Well, welcome in. Um, we are just um, in the last quarter of the stream, so to say, where I'm joined by Raquel Costa, and we, or I guess she, is working on um, an illustration, a stylized illustration. We have started uh, the one with um, a sketch, which already was prepared, and then she did the line work. And now we are into the texture, or the, the volume, the, the shading, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. Um, and yeah, that's what we're doing right now. And, the, yeah, and Viola so. says, uh, Sean rocks. That's right. Sean is a pro. That's, yeah. <laughs> He's really cool. Yeah. He's, he's also a streamer, by the way. Oh, perfect. And um, what I also like, I'm, and then I would be done with my, uh, <laughs> with my with rambling. What I really like is um, just building the community around um, art. And um, exactly. that's exactly what we want to do here as well. So now, yeah. back to you. <laughs> and while we're here, yeah. because we're here of you, because of you. Um, you are using which brush again for this great grain texture? For yeah. this, this grain is shader. the SG grain shader brushes. I will admit, I don't remember where uh, what this uh, collection exactly because I've mm. I've imported my old brushes from from desktop Photoshop to 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 the iPad. So I'm not always sure uh, of the specifics of well who made them I, I i don't make a lot of my brushes of my own brushes i i will admit um maybe well it i'm lazy looks I'm, like I'm, a I'm website sorry. called uh, spoon graphics oh exactly exactly it might it, it makes sense yeah i can post so, into the chat and yeah. of course oh, there are you. a lot lots and lots of uh, kai webster brushes which have perhaps a similar effect and if yeah. you are a Creative Cloud subscriber or a Photoshop subscriber, um, they are free for you or at no extra cost. I mean, of course, <laughs> Fresco costs money or Photoshop, but at no extra yeah. cost. And um, I just saw some um, some um, messages in the YouTube chat. And um, if you are joining us for the first time, just as a reminder for you, we are reading the Behance chat and I will put the link for you in the chat. Okay. Perfect. So now I'm moving on to another shape in my character, which is her jacket or her coat. And I'm doing the same approach. I'm going to create a base solid shape so I can load it as a selection. 
and that no this isn't part of that shape so just building the shape with a lasso tool bit by bit so i can roll around rotate my canvas as needed and uh, since i already have uh a part of of my character that's filled uh with the more solid and volumetric shape so i'm going to use this part this the, the jacket for for contrast so this is going to be something that's more simple not so dark mm -hmm. uh so more more white space and the um, the texturization that i'm going to use will be uh, a more graphic minimalistic one so first the shape okay so i'm going to fill this with with, with white it's it's cool and um to save up some time i had a texture prepared here uh the ones that the same texture that i usually use um oh it's it could be it could work like this if the texture yeah. was yeah. <laughs> was was the background a bit busy but, uh, but, um... a bit busy <laughs> yeah it have to it, it would need a little work to make yeah. it work but um but yeah happy don't accidents. don't happy accidents sometimes and it, they only happen if you experiment so um what i'm going to to do now is i'm going to move this layer up Okay, so oh, just got a very important question by Ricardo, mm -hmm. uh, Ricardo Fernandez. Uh, hey guys, hey everyone! Uh, congrats on the presentation, really good. Unfortunately, I missed the first thirty minutes of the live stream. Is it possible to see it later? Yes, of course. We are recording every stream, so even if you have missed the first part, uh, the first half, you can absolutely watch it later. You can just keep um, the player open and you can scrub back at any time. You could go back even right now, but I don't recommend it because then you would. <laughs> lose out on the live stream <laughs> and uh, that wouldn't be great yeah you would miss okay so what what happened here no i i did something on the wrong layer you see so what i want now is to oh here it is so uh, what I've done now is I, I, I put the texture in, in uh, the angle that I thought might work best with the lines that I've got. And uh, so I just loaded up the selection that I've made of the jacket shape. And so now I'm, I, I applied a layer mask. To, so the texture only shows in this, in mm -hmm. this shape. And um, okay, I'm just gonna clean up the the mask a little bit with a, a harder hard line tool. I'm going to use the, the, the same one that I was using from Kyle's ink box, the Guelph Pro. We do we do need to have brush favorites in Photoshop. We do have in the fresco. Cat. Yeah, we do. I know. I use them. <laughs> I mean, if you really want to create uh, your custom brush palette, you can always um, like create a custom folder or custom library and have them all in one group so mm -hmm. then you only have to look through the one list because i i, I agree uh scrolling through the entire list every single time that's a bit too much <laughs> so, yeah and uh it's it's been um a big part of my of my workflow um for, you know, on photoshop for desktop and mm -hmm. and other apps to just work it, it's good to have big collection big collections of brushes for whenever you need them and for different projects but it's useful that you have your favorites uh in one place yeah. when you when you need them because in the end yeah as everyone already mentioned we all have a few favorites that we tend to to go back to so it's useful <laughs> to have uh, them at hand um yeah so favorites really important fresco that's why i like it and of course the great thing about photoshop on the desktop is you can search brushes so even if you have a huge big list you can always type in the name if you remember it uh pro tip yeah. rename your brushes with your favorite uh character and then you can find it and uh ricardo yeah. don't worry if you don't remember remember my name i've never told you it and it doesn't say it anywhere on the stream so my name is tim i work for adobe and uh, today i'm the host of the beautiful 
Raquel, and thanks for joining. Uh, Thank you for your questions. <laughs> and Sandrine says, that's what I have done for my favorite uh, favorites in Photoshop. If I discover a new one, I just copy it and put it in the favorite folder, including the ones I have yeah. tweaked. Yeah? Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and Sean says, <laughs> I hate always searching for a soft round. Well, pro tip, they're at the very top. Yeah, the that's that's the good part because the the basics are always really accessible <laughs> at the top, so you can't miss them. So now I'm just going to do this little fine details, fill in some of this. Okay, maybe I've missed a joke. That I... Perhaps it was a joke, and I've just missed it. I mean, if you're looking for a soft round, you can just look at me after uh, Christmas dinner. <laughs> I'm also usually a soft and round after that. Um, yeah. uh, <clears throat> anyway. Um, so now just one thing that I haven't mentioned and now I, I will. Yeah, I could do a lot more with this, with this uh, mm -hmm. drawing, with this demo. Of course, I could try and work with a colored background. I can try and experiment with different textures. But what I uh, since we don't have that much time, what I would like to, to mention is when, when I, I talked about earlier in uh, working, thinking in, ter in, in terms of the composition that you have to have like balance and contrast and rhythm. And one of the things that I think about when I, when I think about the, these aspects, it's having something that guides your eye and something that can work as kind of a, a focal point, something that creates a little bit of added contrast. And for for some of these illustrations, what I've been working with is um, having a really small detail with um, bold contrasting color, something that uh, a character could be holding. Yeah, I noticed like that's a... something um, recurring, like a recurring element. Yeah. The one red thing in your illustration always like a... Like a yeah, touch, and like so, so I, I, I thought it might be nice to, to have it here as well, mm -hmm. because um, it's, it's, uh, it's part of the visual language. So it, since it's all black and white and, and since uh, we didn't get to explore much uh, work with color, um, it makes sense to have this element of added contrast so yeah um and if it's having... not like brightness and darkness in terms of contrast it can be a color contrast yeah exactly and i really so... like uh, how it's still a very small element so even though this pop of color is in there it's not like the overwhelming majority of the image which will then just ruin the whole effect yeah it's a, it's a small it's a small detail so now i'm, yeah. I'm using the the round brush the hard round brush again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just to to keep it really really sharp as a time reminder we have about 3 minutes but if you need a bit more time then we can go on for another 10 if you want no, I don't think so. I think okay. um, I, I might do later uh, a bit of uh, an extra work on this image, mm -hmm. a few added elements for the background, the same as I, as I did with uh, with the, the example illustrations that I've showed you. And I will post it on my social media later. So yes. uh, you can always check the, the, the final result with a little bit of uh, more added elements. Um, because I, one, one thing that I that I think really makes up for the image, because right now it's just a character uh, in a big, wide, empty space, mm. and there's not really um, something that grounds her. So I do think it would benefit from from having uh, some some background elements, even if it's just like I'm going to switch to here something like this because because of of the the position of the hair of the character you get a sense that there is wind and, and if there was yeah. wind there's there's motion and so these abstract shapes and lines are just helping you get into that um uh into that mood, mood and that that feeling that you're you're in a space where things are moving and air is moving is air is flowing so um this is kind of has a similar uh, attitude to it 
because there's also the notion of, of motion. And so I might add a, a few shapes later. And so I'll share it uh, on social media so you can see what options we could have. It and, almost looks um, a bit like she's listening to a very funky groove, perhaps by Kenny yeah. G and just going down. Like, da, 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 <laughs> yeah. Da, da, da. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? And well, for, from here, uh, it's it, it's really just... Um, um, I don't know. It's you can you can do whatever changes you, you want. For example, if if I didn't want to have such a hard line texture, I could experiment with something more organic, but that would have sort of the same result. Let me see if I'm not working. I have to work on a new layer. What's happening? Okay. So, for example, I could create sort of like a leopard. Oh, wow. Okay. Pattern. I don't know. I mean, that's quite the contrast now. With the yeah, it's, it's, it's really, lines. really different. So it, it, it does make a difference. And the, the, the image does change when you, you switch to, to a texture such, such as this. So I might need to, to adjust some, some elements of the... Um, of the drawing of the composition to better fit this because this is a really uh, strong texture and it really dominates the 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 image. But it's just so you know that when you, when you want to to work with contrasting shapes, contrasting textures, different types of lines, there's a lot of ways to 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 go about it, not just just one. So this one, okay, would be my my yeah, it feels approach. more balanced. It's, Otherwise, perhaps yeah. the eye would be drawn to the jacket immediately and perhaps not exactly. the face or the red part. So, um, yeah. well done. So, I really like it. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for staying with me for, for yeah. the session. And uh, you've really helped my nerves um, just Aww. disappear. So. <laughs> <laughs> I hope As you enjoyed I always it. Say it. Everyone is nervous before they go live, but after they're done, it, they usually say, let's do it again. <laughs> so um, that is exactly it from, from you today. So I just got a couple of things to tell the mm -hmm. people who are watching at home. And then we will wrap up the stream for today. So first of all, uh, if this was your first time joining an Adobe live stream, you're missing out because we are live pretty much every day. Well, in the UK, we're live Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but in the US and also in France and Germany and um, all the other locations like Australia, we are live almost every day. And if you want to check out the schedule for the live streams, and if you're on Behance, you can just scroll down right below the player. You will see all the um, videos which have already happened and you will see that the next one, for example, about Creative Cloud Express will happen at 4.30 p.m. UK time or 5.30 CET. So lots and lots and lots of content, like I think over 40 hours a week. So <laughs> certainly <laughs> enough uh, for you. And um, I've also saw a, qu a question in the chat, mm -hmm. I think from Stevie, which is also related. Any suggestions at all, please, uh, from, um, from you? Does Adobe have classes for beginners like me? Yes, we do. Um, they are called master classes. Usually happen every Friday uh, in the evening, at least in European time evening. Um, and also we have something called the daily creative challenges um, for Photoshop, for Illustrator, for XD and for Premiere sometimes. And for Creative Cloud Express too, where uh, we have small challenges every day for you to follow along and um, submit and you will get feedback. So if you want to learn the apps, that's a great way to get started. And as always, you're very welcome to ask questions in the chat. And finally, <laughs> I know it's a lot of info. Uh, and finally, we do have our Discord community. So if, if you like, you can join the Adobe Live UK Discord. And I will post the link to that in the chat. There we are. Um, right, that's it from me. Uh, let's, I just noticed you did some final touches to the image. Should we? Yeah, yeah. Well, while we're talking, I was noticing sometimes when you zoom out, you see little details that, that don't feel so so balanced. And so what I was working on was here in the in the hair, I was putting it a more hmm. hard light towards the 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 edge of the 
the left area of the hair. So kind of like a, adding a light direction that's more visible. So just that's very nice. some and, fine uh, details. Ricardo, yes, Discord is free indeed. Right, that is it for the day. That's our stream. So I've seen the many comments in the chat asking for you to come back. Mm -hmm. So maybe, who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Hopefully, <laughs> we will have you back very soon with another fresco session, perhaps. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Um, but that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and at home, thank you for watching. If you want to, if you'd like to rewatch the stream, you can do so right after this one has ended. This will be available as a recording, as uh, are all the other streams too. So thanks for joining and we will be back tomorrow with the next stream all about, let me check. Do, 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 do. Is it Tony? I, maybe? I don't know. Let me. No, no, I don't, now I have to find <laughs> out. Hang on. Oh, no, it's Tanya. Tanya will be back. And it's going to be all about creating your flyer for an online workshop. So catchy promotional material. If you ever did something to promote anything online, this is the stream for you. It will be a host. Uh, 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 Tanya will be the guest and Tony Harmer will be the host. Um, and they will work in Illustrator and InDesign. So do come back tomorrow, same time, same place, same channel on Behance. Raquel, thank you. Any last words before we go offline? Um, I, I just want to thank you, Tim, for, for having me and for staying with me throughout the session. Um, it's been delightful to be here and share a little bit of my process and my experience. And thank you, everyone who came to watch. watch. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you, you can, well, return. And I hope I can return because it's been a wonderful experience. Lovely. All right. Well, then, everyone, have a wonderful rest of your day and see you mm -hmm. either tomorrow or later during the other Adobe Live US streams. Bye-bye for now. Bye.